Had you seen Grantchester before you auditioned? No, I, I don't really like shows about vicars and detectives. <laughs> James Runcie, the creator of the book, said, Grantchester, quintessentially English, beautiful, idyllic, peaceful, and tranquil, perfect for picnics and murder. It seems that after the war, after rationing has stopped, that Britain has never had it so good. We are all Adam and Eve, and the world is our garden. Everyone's in this overwhelming state of well-being. Everybody appears to be happy. Daniel and Leonard, Mrs. C, Geordie and Kathy. Everything's working. It's all good. Life seems to have been settled at the vicarage again, and Will has now settled in very nicely, the new vicar, and Leonard is behaving well. So it looks like everything's going to go very smoothly. But underneath that veneer of loveliness, is this darkness bubbling away. She'll be picking sick out of that blonde hair come midnight. Mark my words, Larry. No matter how good things are, he always knows something bad is around the corner because in his world, that's how life is. The brighter the light, the darker the shadows. As beautiful as it seems to be on the surface, how dark can it get underneath? And one of the things we've always enjoyed doing is challenging ourselves and the audience into where we can take the show. It's a murder show, so you know, murder's always a dark subject, but I think there's some storylines in this one that aren't often discussed or look into. In this series, we're looking at things that we're talking about now that, that were relevant then. We're talking about mental health issues. What happened in the 50s? Was there any help? <laughs> So the crimes in Grantchester this year take our lead characters into a number of different worlds. Excuse me? We have a story set in an all-girls college at Cambridge. There is a hit and run on the Grantchester High Street. There is a murder at the cinema in Cambridge. We have a body found on the fence. Introducing! In the red corner! There is an accident at a boxing match. And there is a convent that isn't quite a convent. And all of these worlds give us an opportunity to peel back the layers on what was really happening in Cambridge in 1957. Our path through life would be pretty lonely without anyone to share it with. This series, our friendship is well and truly blossoming. And the thing with Will is that he's, he has a hole missing in his life. And Geordie becomes that father figure and the best friend. When we first saw Tom and Robson together, we all breathed a sigh of relief, really, because th that chemistry was there. You get a look at the driver? No. Make of car? Maybe. Number plate? Yes and it'll come back to me any minute. I mean, Will and Georgie, they sort of write themselves now. So I just have to start typing a scene and they'll be bantering away for ages. There's a, a warmth and a humour to them. They're not just solving a crime, they're friends as well. Like anything, you've got to really like a person behind the lens and enjoy their company for it to resonate in front of the lens. And I really genuinely like Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so then you get, Great. and then you get the other one. Three, 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 and Retracing your steps. It's American mumbo jumbo. Lot to answer for those Americans. Can you finish this conversation in your head? Grantchester is an ensemble piece. It's full of a gallery of characters who have their own journeys, but it is the relationships that make the show work. With Leonard, he sort of adds a, a lot of comedy. Leonard, nothing. Leonard and Mrs. C, we call them the double act. They irritate each other and in the vicarage. Don't let me keep you. They have fun together. She knows about him, but kind of puts it, you know, in a sort of dark cupboard. I think we're allowed a stiff handshake. He's met someone in Daniel who they have a partnership and a, a friendship, and they've been on a, a holiday together, Morocco, where uh, two men are allowed to hold hands and stay in the same place. How was Bogner? You had the sun then. He's come back with a big smile on his face. It was very temperate. Geordie has been noticing that since Kathy's been working, not much is uh, getting done in the house. It's the cavalry. The arrival of her mother, you don't really know which way it's going to go. Geordie's never been very, what shall I say, complimentary about Kathy's mother. Oh, can't face the world without my face. <laughs> So this series 
Will still has his vow of celibacy. Hi. He's better looking than the rest of your boys. There is a new character in Ellie who is a, a journalist. You know, when you, you like at school, when you like someone and you kind of tease them, that's how it starts for those two. Spreading malicious gossip's how you enjoy yourself. You might want to have another look at your life. Well, at least I make my own stuff up for a living, rather than spouting rubbish from some old book. And I think she, she poses a bit of a challenge for Will because I don't think he's had somebody quite as confident and self-assured as, as she is. He doesn't morally agree with her techniques of how she gets information but he also really likes her. One of the fun things about working at Grantchester is it offers a range of tones to work with. So you've got humour and heart and warmth, and you've also got darkness and mystery and crime and human drama all in one package. And that's exciting to work on, and I th hope it's exciting to watch as well. There's many things that attract people to Grantchester. It's very charming, it's quintessentially English, but the beauty of it is there's always something uncomfortable going on and comedy always comes at a tragedy. So much for Eden then. It's interesting, isn't it, why, why this show is so popular, not only here and, and around the world, and why the kind of likability transcends mm. everywhere. Look, I've got, to, I've got to go and do a sermon. Go on, then. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Love you. Bye. He's too good looking, I don't like him.